who is Tracking Point? We're an applied tech company that created the world's first smart rifles. And we've democratized accuracy, and we've entirely disrupted the shooting experience. <laughs> In spring of 2013, Texas-based startup Tracking Point unveiled the first ever precision-guided firearm, which is essentially a long-range, laser-guided robo-rifle. Call it the gun of tomorrow. Uh, you don't have to be an experienced shooter. Uh, you don't have to be someone who's put thousands of rounds down range. You can come and pick this up and within minutes be able to master the tag track exact technology that allows you to get on target. The technology is so advanced, we've heard it can have beginners killing at a thousand yards with single-shot accuracy in no time. Tracking Point claims its closed-loop system helps users make ethical kill shots, but critics of the PGS say it's nothing more than skill-free killing. You know, if you're going to spend years training to kill somebody, then uh, that's a pretty big barrier to being able to go out and you know, buy a gun this afternoon that can shoot somebody at you know, three-quarters of a mile away. We know the gravity of the products we put in the marketplace is a, is a pretty significant thing. There are guns. They can take lives. But, you know, we're not trying to put out a product that enables skill-free killing. The implications of this kind of technology challenge the idea of personal responsibility. And although you could argue that we've become more and more machine-dependent in armed conflict, it seems to me that there is a tipping point. And this kind of weapon uh, may be it. So has killing become too easy? Motherboard wanted to find out. So we're out here in West Texas, headed towards Austin to meet up with the Tracking Point folks. We're going to check out the future of weapons and see if their smart rifle can let someone like me, who hasn't really shot before, hit a target from a thousand yards away. But first, we need to learn the basics of shooting. And why not start with high-end AR-15s? Really good guys that have taught me how to shoot. So one thing they teach me is, don't punch that trigger. After a crash course in safety and shooting stance, they give us some fresh mags and cut us loose. You have hit that 200 yard target, I can see it. I can oh, see okay. a holster. Turns out we're not so bad for first timers. Yeah, I got it. So the guys challenge us to a little something they call the Baghdad run. successful for a first timer, I would say. And of course, there's a helicopter. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to, uh, <laughs> I'm ready to pluck something right now. Actually. You nailed him on the first shot, did you know that? Yeah, not bad for 10 minutes of practice, huh? <laughs> it's fun and all, but we didn't come down here just to light up tree stumps. We want to see the PGF for ourselves, and Darren is happy to oblige. Uh, this is our XS1 platform. It does all of your ballistic solution for you. With a simple push of this tag button right here, this red button on the rifle, the LRF fires the laser downrange onto the target, and it's updating back to the scope at 54 times per second, and that's what does your ballistic calculation. To fire the rifle, you squeeze and hold the trigger. Whereas most rifles, as soon as you squeeze, the rifle fires. Well, our rifle will not fire until the reticle is lined back up with the tag point that you just set on the target by pushing the tag button. Here's how it works. In traditional sniping, you have to shoot above your target due to the bullet's drop. Tracking Point's platform does the exact same thing, only it does it for you. The secret sauce is in the scope, a proprietary unit that's hardwired to the gun's electronic trigger. It does all your ballistics work. Tag a target down range, and the PGS laser beams there and back 54 times every second, adjusting for a range of variables. Only once you've perfectly aligned the adjusted sight will the trigger fire itself. Squeeze and hold, and then move it into the tag. Boom! Oh, shit. Like, boom! <laughs> and here it come back. The gun does take some getting used to. 
But even though it kicks like a mule, I'm shooting at targets a thousand yards away in just minutes. See it. Just a huge explosion and someone tells me I did a good job. <laughs> The evolution of the technology has led us to be able to even at some point potentially go away from the two-man sniper team to effectively change tactics on the modern battlefield for a sniper. The man behind the gun is Jason Schauble, an Iraq war vet and no stranger to firearms. I was that kid who like read all the military books and who like all I ever wanted to be was in the special forces and I was able to realize that dream and then get maimed in my prime in my early 30s and have to make some different life decisions. I got shot in Iraq probably during the fifth month of a seven month deployment trying to pull one of my guys out of a house who had gotten killed. That's the uh, 11 millimeter uh, cut right there of the, uh, the AK-47 round which I, I keep a piece of it. So that's a piece of lead pulled right out of my arm at some point. I thought it was nice that they gave it to me. So uh, I still have something in there. I had eight surgeries over a year, and they knocked out. Every surgery I had, they would take some capability away, like my thumb, which is what separates me from being a, a monkey. So I was kind of disappointed about that one. Um. As we're realizing, everyone at Tracking Point seems to have a story, and even family ties. Take Jason's kid brother, Oren. I guess we found the, found it a former EDM musician who couldn't say no when his big brother came knocking. And Jason Shabba, my brother, is the CEO. His initial thing was, hey, you want to do something totally and completely different, totally more challenging than anything you could do now. Like, come look at this technology. <laughs> Kids kind of grow up and they might have a, a dream of being a rock star, or being you know, in some kind of, this is, I don't think that's the same dream now. The ideal now is to be in technology, is to be on the cutting edge of something. You're looking at Mark Zuckerberg, you're looking at all these, you know, you're looking at Elon Musk, all these really interesting people, like that's what's inspiring, I feel like, to, you know, to someone, to someone like me more so than other, you know, than other aspirations. In a two-year development process, one of the biggest things that we wanted to get to, we do a lot of our testing virtually, we do a lot of our testing in software, but actually getting out and getting results and taking ethical kill shots on animals at long range, that's the true test of what our firearms can do. Our longest shot on a blue wildebeest, where we actually shot uh, from a cliff. Um, we shot from the place where you normally spot herds of game and then drive down in order to shoot them. We just shot from there. Um, second longest is 1099 on a spring buck, which is a relatively small animal. And then we even keep this one, uh, this is one of Hillman's best shots, but uh, they, we shot a bug. Normally the photo is of the guy with the animal, whereas we wanted to put front and center, it's the product and the capability of the product that's uh, been able to achieve those kinds of results. So a smart rifle is merely the integration of modern technology with a formerly industrial or traditional pursuit. I'm allowing a guy who's untrained to be able to become very, very proficient within minutes. We have not done anything new from a firearms perspective. What we've done is been able to use technology to make you know, the ability to use those firearms better a more of an entry level skill set as opposed to an advanced level skill set. We're not just a firearms company, we're an applied technology company. The technology that we create and that our engineers are developing can be utilized across a variety of industries in the future. Any, everything from additional sporting and hunting goods all the way to phones and drone technology and we don't know where it's going to go next, which makes it more exciting and more dynamic than other companies in our industry and also makes it one of the things that it's a pleasure to work there. Over the past year, Tracking Point has expanded to a staff of around 100. They've completely outgrown an already sizable facility, which features a live fire simulator, optics lab, industrial design wing, machining, manufacturing, engineering, and of course, an armory. So this is our XS3 platform. Um, that's our XS1, the 338 platform, and this is our XS2. This is what this is our original one of our original prototypes when we first did a proof of concept. Um, you can see it literally is a glass scope with boards zip tied to it and all sorts of stuff hanging off of it. It's clear that the bulk of the R&D isn't in the gun, but rather its scope. To hear these guys tell it, the new face of gun manufacturing looks a lot like Silicon Valley. 
what we've done is a fundamentally different shift in that we can, we've democratized accuracy. Precision Guided Firearm was our first offering, right? It, is, it was about emphasizing long range, extreme distance, because that was the hardest thing to do. The second step is, how do we make that experience better? How do we make it a 21st century experience? How do we design a UI that's simple and compelling to a generation that has a UI in everything they do? Everything you're using now is incorporating a heads-up display. Your car is getting one, your ski goggles are getting one, and now your firearm is getting one. Yeah, I'm from the sort of the Call of Duty, Halo, I guess, generation. I grew up playing video games. There's just a huge generation of people who, if they aren't, don't know things about firearms outside of that, they still know a ton just purely through those video game franchises. And so you have all these kids who are there, you know, they're playing them, they're Googling all that stuff, watching all those videos. We're a natural integration there, mostly because of the heads-up display. So these are some of the things that we thought about when we did Smart Rifle. It wasn't just about, how do I make a rifle more accurate? You know, over time, I can hit, hit a, as broad a market, I can actually grow the shooting market from where it is today. One of the ways Tracking Point is expanding that market is by allowing their users to stream and upload videos of their kills directly from the scope's Wi-Fi. It's part of a broader push to target digital natives. Across town, engineers at Chaotic Moon Studios are developing apps and games for Tracking Point. TJ Phillips, I'm an iOS developer here at Chaotic Moon. Currently, I'm working on the Scope app, which is mainly used to configure the Scope. You can download the uh, media files that are on the Scope and save them on your ca um, local camera. You can also update the Scope from the software as well. My name is Elizabeth Salazar, and I'm working on Venture X, which is the game that actually goes along with the Scope. The idea is that it's teaching you how to use the tracking point scope. So to find the animals, you actually like move the device around as if you were moving a sight, and then you tag them and then shoot them. Yeah! Did you see it? Immediate kill. I always feel bad when I wound them instead of kill them. So then they run away, and then it's like animal escaped to go die slowly in the forest somewhere. Shooting video game animals is one thing. Killing real animals is another. Before we go hunting with the PGF, the Tracking Point guys want us to experience the raw feel of a traditional Texas hunt. The company does some of its live fire testing on feral pigs, which have overrun parts of the state. Bear in mind that these things decimate crops and otherwise robust ecosystems. The problem has gotten so bad that Texas's pig hunting season is open year round. So later that night, we grab AR-15s and head out into the desert. So we're currently in the back of a pickup on some like stadium seats, driving around looking for pigs. This will be my first time shooting an animal that's not a little bird with a BB gun. We'll see what happens. Right here, I don't know if you hit him or hit right in front of him because he did a he turned on a dime. Squeeze, squeeze. Damn it. Shit. Keep on him, keep on him. <laughs> the heck? Dropped that one. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 there he is. Oh, is he going? I think you might have stunned him. I think it's time to change shooters. <laughs> I can't believe you guys are putting all this pressure on me when it's my first day. Yeah, well, yeah, we're shooting Darth Vader rifle tomorrow. So, yeah. <laughs> the next morning, on our way to test Tracking Point's gun from the top of Sandstone Mountain, we see a wake of buzzards hanging around the area we'd been shooting at the night before. That is a tiny little dead pig that has gotten pretty torn up from the buzzards already, so looks like it probably went down pretty quick. Oh. 
At a few hundred feet above our target, all the ballistic factors that PGF adjusts for really start acting up. Getting a wind reading? It's going between uh, like 5.8 and 8.8, .8, which is no big deal. At close range, we're at 1,000 yards. It could mean quite a bit. That looked pretty good. If you've been out to the range with us, et cetera, you see, cool, you can easily hit targets at ranges 500, 600, 800. There's still a skill level involved. There's still your wind calls. There's still the actual ability to get yourself in front of game. And there's still the ability to understand a firearm, how it works, how all these new elements are integrated, and how to make that interesting and inspiring for yourself. This isn't any kind of boring application where, yeah, I'm just going to go out and be able to knock down anything at any time. <laughs> Hunting and shooting is an experience which involves a lot of time, no matter what system you use to engage with it. Send it. Send it. Looked a little left, the wind kicked up yeah. at the last second. Yeah. yeah. After a dozen or so shots, we head back down to see how we did. Yeah, they're all left, it's wind. Yeah. If you'll pan back up there, to the top where that bear spot is. That's where we were shooting from, 998 yards. Those right there would be would be killing shots. These these, sh these shots right here. This one would have been a little low. These right here would have been would have been shots that we could take because we were tagging here and we weren't always perfect on our tag. Sometimes we were left or right. Uh, a lot of people say that our rifle is automatic. You know, just whatever you hit, you can whatever tag you can hit and. Y'all have seen when the wind's doing squirrely stuff, it's not as easy. At 500, when we shot that other target at 500, bam. But you push it out to 1,000 and things, things get weird. Anybody could sort of become a highly skilled sniper. You just need a lot of practice, which means a lot of time at the firing range uh, and, and a lot of determination and dedication to acquire a very specific skill, which now you can replicate through a technological enhancement. If you had a golf club that guaranteed hold us in one, <laughs> who would play golf. Although the shooting pursuit is a more of a loaded term in today's modern culture, like it's part of our cultural DNA, it's part of our Bill of Rights. Almost half of this country shoots. That marketplace deserves someone to think about how to make their experience better, just like somebody deserves to think about how to make extreme sports better or how to make, you know, skiing better. Um, it would be no different. The part of it that makes it uh, sport is, is really gone. The skill element is, is being uh, eliminated. And if you are eliminating the skill from shooting, what's left? You know, reducing the level of the entry requirements to say you don't have to spend 10 years to get good at long range calculations, or some people go their entire lifetime without being able to make long range shots. If we're able to give them a technology that can allow them to ethically do something that they couldn't do before and have them have less of a barrier to entry into a sport, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It's finally time to put Tracking Point's technology to the test in an actual hunt. After about an hour, the pigs show up. There it is. Okay, here we go. Crater. Just run off? Right when he moved, that tad slid back back on him a little bit. He, he went down, though. He did? One of them hightailed it out of there, to the left. Smell that. Smell. America. <laughs> Meanwhile, in a blind across the ranch, our producer Brian killed a 250-pound boar using the PGF. <laughs> it was the first time Brian had ever killed an animal, and the sixth time he'd ever fired a gun. Holy cow. Where'd he go, dude? Did Brian shot it? Hey, he know, drilled Brian it. Brian shot him. Oh, Brian is born again hard. Let's go down there and see what we got.
Well, I thought I hit him a lot more solid than that. <laughs> you think when you knock him down, they're gonna stay down? <laughs> Blood. You can see all this is all matted in here. See how it's all sprinkled right here? I mean, he's bleeding, he's hit good. I mean, I hit him good, I had him tagged good. That's why I'm just like, where is he? I mean, we've shot, we've shot, look, see, there's blood here. As Darren looks around for his pig, it's clear his shot wasn't an immediate kill. Just trying to find that last spot of blood. We never do find the pig. Darren would later tell us how it was the first time he'd ever used a PGF and not known right away if the animal had died. It's been an intense few days. When I shot AR-15s, my nerves came into play. My hands weren't perfectly steady. Let your breath out, get a nice, good rhythm in your breathing. Don't be like, <sighs> when you're trying to shoot, just let that breath out, right? Squeeze, 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 and then let it break, and then hold that trigger. That human imprecision had me questioning when the right time was to pull the trigger. And shooting is so visceral. Strange as it sounds, I could feel the shot that actually hit a pig. Is that it right there? Yep. The heck? Dropped that one. <laughs> I was far less stressed to shoot tracking points rifle. Even if every shot isn't a bullseye, I knew it would pull the trigger for me, and only when it was perfectly aligned. The question is, how should we view a tool that can turn a novice into a trained killer? It raises further questions about, you know, what is acceptable in society, whether that's for individual citizens to have access to this kind of technology, or for police forces to have access to that technology, uh, or for militaries. And I, you know, I think militaries are probably going to acquire it. The Precision Guided Firearms Reduced Learning Curve is drawing the attention of everyone from the U.S. military and police to allied governments. Tracking Point has plans to apply its technology to a suite of weapons, a first-person shooter video game, and even a super gun capable of single-shot accuracy at two miles. The pace of change and the pace at which we can innovate, I mean, we came up with something in two or three years that wasn't supposed to be ready until 2020. In our conversations with the, with the U.S. military, we've had conversations about how their procurement system, by the time they choose an item, qualify an item, go into low rate production, qualify low rate production, go into full rate production, I'm already gonna have something better out. The notion of technology at, the, at its core is to enable us to you know, manipulate an environment in a more efficient way to achieve human ends. The road we're on is a road that will only uh, accelerate in the next few decades. We have committed ourselves to um, the Promethean fire. This is the world in which we live. It's a world in which we have created.